So we've spent almost an hour uh, in tutorials so far, and we don't even have anything on the page. That's pretty typical, uh, even in class. Usually would we, we would be in about an hour before um, we have actually anything to show for it. So we've covered the document setup. We've covered navigating the document. I'm going to just say, remember, hold that space bar down, click and drag to move things around. Use that default to your main cursor after you've used any other tools. Really try and make that a habit. Um, I'm just going to move a couple things here. OK, so we're going to get something in here. And the first thing will be an image. In your uh, tutorial materials that I handed out for class two, you'll have some a couple of images there. And the way we bring images into InDesign is by doing what's called File Place. So I'm going to go to the File menu and write down to Place or Command D. And Command D is you use that so often, it's a good one to remember. It's a great key command. Just Command D for File Place. Because you are placing images in, you can place uh, text in as well. For example, if you have a Word document with all of the copy you need, um, you would go to File Place or Command D and you can place that entire document right in, that text. You don't have to copy and paste from another document. In fact, it's recommended that you don't just copy and paste if you have a proper Word document because you can miss some formatting and so on when you paste. Um, when I do a book, I receive the manuscript, typically in a Word document, and the first thing I do is what we call a content dump, and I would go File, Place, grab that Word document, and place the entire book in. And what InDesign does is it just makes automatically the number of pages that it needs to fit that manuscript. So file place is something that you do often. So we're going to go to that. We're going to do file place or again, command D. And from your tutorial materials, let's choose that image. So we'll go to images and I'm going to choose the hot rod couple. And gives you a little information about the image. I'll just say open. And I'm going to place this. Now, when I say open, it gives me a, what's called a thumbnail, a little preview of that image. I'm going to go right up here to the bleed guide when I place it. Right here, I'm on the page. Here's the margin guide again. Here's the page edge. I'm going to go up to the corner of the bleed guide and click. Now, what you're seeing, that's a high res image, even though you see it fuzzy, don't worry about that at the moment. It's a high res image, it's quite large in its dimension, so it's going off of the page. So we have a few things that we need to do here. Working with images in InDesign the first few times can truly be annoying um, because when we bring an image in, it's actually two objects in one. I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a moment. And we're, we're trying to do a few things simply to know how to work with this image, get, get it set the way we want it, but also without frustration or with minimal frustration, try to get it placed correctly and so on. I, this is one of those aspects where you really do need to be very patient with yourself in learning this. It won't take long. It'll take a few times of trying um, and then you just you get to know it like anything else. But it does it does uh, bring with it a little bit of frustration at first. Um, even I still sometimes I I just misstep my hand on the keyboard and I I uh, realize how annoying it can be. However, the reasoning behind uh, InDesign's working this way is quite useful once you start using the program a lot. So 
what we're seeing here. First of all, you placed your image in your high res image and it looks fuzzy. We're going to go to view the view menu and down to display performance. Now what this does be, because InDesign can be a doc uh, can create a document that has uh, a thousand pages and if they all have images on them that can really slow down the speed of a computer. So they make it so that it reduces the clarity of that image in order to speed up or maintain a good speed for the computer. The computers that we're using typically at this point um, can handle uh, showing the high quality of this image because we're not doing multi-page documents. We're only doing one so we may have um, you know half a dozen images at most in one uh, project. So we can run at high quality display. So if you remember that when you do um, place an image into your document and you see that it's fuzzy, it may in fact be simply too low in resolution. The quality of that, that image is poor. And we'll talk about resolution when we get into Photoshop over the next couple of weeks. However, um, when you place it in and if you know that it's a high resolution image and you still see it showing as fuzzy like that, then remember to go to view and display performance. I believe this is also in the object menu as well. Um, I've always accessed it through, uh, there it is. I've always accessed it through the view menu, but it is in the object menu as well. So when I click high quality display, trusting that this is a high res image, it should clean right up. There we go. Okay. So that again, that'll come up. You know, at times you'll forget where that is and uh, you can rewatch this or you can just ask me. So you typically you want to make sure you're working with um, images that you can tell are proper. It's just an easier way to work. And now I'm going to scale this image down. Now scaling versus changing the size is what we want to be sure we're doing. When we scale an image, we're maintaining the proportions of it. And this is where InDesign can be a little annoying. Now I'm going to show you something here. When we placed this image in, we see the frame, this blue with these white, what we call handles, is the frame. And you see this little circle in the middle here that when we hover over it, our hand shows. This is indicating the image that's in the frame. So there's actually two objects here. There's the frame itself and there's the image within it. So I'm, I'm just moving that image around. You can see when I select the image, I just clicked on that circle. That's an orange frame. So now I have the image selected. And now I've moved it around so much that I could do Command Z a few times and get it back. Or I can go to Object and Fitting and fit the image or the content to the frame so it'll put it back where it was. And this is a, a useful thing to be aware of, fitting, fitting frame to content, content to frame, centering the content and so on. Uh, it's, good to, it's good to be aware of that. Um, there'll be times where you may want to use that or you just know it exists and you can just ask. Um, and I, I will say that a lot of what we cover in InDesign isn't in any way about you memorizing how to do things. It's being aware so that you know there's a proper way and that's when you can ask or rewatch this or look it up. Um, you can't memorize everything that we go through. These are steps that with repetition and with um, asking and doing them repeated, repeatedly, um, they'll become uh, quite second nature uh, after using this a few times. Okay, so I have the image selected still, so I'm going to click off 
and now I'll click back on. And what I want to do is scale this image. So I'm going to go right down to this corner. And you can do this from any corner, any handle on the frame. But I usually do it from um, the corner that I'm trying to bring in. And when I placed it, you may have seen that I used my spacebar and I moved things over so I could see it. Sometimes you place an image and it's so big that it goes off of what's called the pasteboard or this, this gray blank area around our page. So you may have to zoom out. So space command option, holding those down and clicking. You may have to zoom out to find the edge of the image to scale it in. Um, you are going to be working with high resolution images. So sometimes you simply have to be able to access what isn't showing. I'll give you an example. If I pasted this in and I was only seeing that, that can be frustrating, especially when you're, you're at this point and you use your hand, you're like, where's the rest of my image? So zooming out, space command option, clicking on the image, and then I see, oh wow, it's way out there. So that's where I would scale it and, um, oops, I would scale it down and put it back where it belongs. Now I'm going to undo a couple because I want to go back to the way we had it. And command zero and space bar, click and drag, move that over. So now I want to scale this. I'm going to go down here. When you scale something, now this with the Adobe programs, it was always for every graphic designer up until a couple years ago, second nature to hold the shift key, click and drag on that corner. Now in InDesign, you're going to notice there's an issue here that I'll discuss in a moment. So I'm going to do command Z and undo. In InDesign and Illustrator, you still use the shift key. Anytime you're scaling something, use the shift key. What that does is it maintains proportions. In Photoshop, they've removed the need to use the shift key and they've made it reverse. If you use the shift key, you're going to skew your image. You're actually going to do this if you use the shift key. That's in Photoshop. In Illustrator and InDesign, we still need to use the shift key. However, in InDesign, because we have an object, our image inside another object, which is our frame, we have to scale both at the same time. So we do Command Shift, click and drag. And I'm going to take this to the other bleed guide. So I'll do that again. So scaling in, Illustra in InDesign, scaling in InDesign, you select the item. So I have my main cursor selected. I click on the image. I can use one of these handles on the frame. I'm going to use one that is technically further away from my placement point. And I'm going to do Command, holding that down. Shift, holding that down. You can see what my cursor looks like. This is the scaling when our, I'm going to let go of everything for a moment. When our cursor is showing like that, this is rotate. This is just my selection tool. This is scaling. When it looks like that, I hold Command, I hold Shift, click and drag. And I let go of my mouse first. Then I can let go of everything. This takes an extreme amount of getting used to and a lot of patience with yourself. Sometimes you're going to do this, you're going to only hold shift by accident, and you're going to scale only the frame. The image is still there. You've hidden some of the image. That's a useful tool for another reason, but when you're scaling down the way we are right now, you don't want to do that. So I just did Command Z. So click, selecting the image, hover over that corner, Command, Shift, click and drag. So if I can suggest anything there, it's Command, Shift, click and drag. So Command, Shift, click and drag, and it maintains the proportions. 
Now, one of the things, if I just did command, this is command shift, but if I just did command and tried it, I'm skewing that image. We're going to talk about that in class as well. But we do not want to skew an image, especially if we have high-end photography or if we have the headshot of a very important person, the last thing we want to do is skew that image. So hovering over the corner, command shift, click and drag. Now what I've done, I brought it from the bleed guide to the bleed guide, that red to red. So when I press W here, which remember that's our presentation mode, I'm, I see what would otherwise be cut off if this went to print. And we brought that image in by doing file and place or command D. So we placed the image in, we went file place or command D, we placed it, then we went to the view and we corrected our display performance to high quality and it looks like I went undo too many times so I'm going to revise that. So we corrected it to high quality display performance so that our image shows crisply, crisp, crisply, I don't know if that's a word, shows clearly and sharply, I know those are words, and I actually did that with the display performance in the object menu. So what I'm doing here now, it actually wasn't changed because I only did it for that single object. So that's a good point to remember. If you are going to change your display performance, it's best to do it through the view menu and just choose high quality. And remember command zero, that resets your page. Now, and you want to work in working mode, so I'm going to turn off that W for a moment. Just press W again. And when we scale, hover over command shift, click and drag. Okay, so using the shift key is going to become so important. And we'll, we'll talk about in one of our lectures in class two, um, why we do that again why we're maintaining the proper proportions of things when we're scaling them <laughs>